Hello, welcome to Holistically Speaking. I am Morella DeVoe, your host. Our mission with Holistically Speaking is to be the avenue through which the voices of holistic health reach you at the time you need it most. Sometimes we talk about physical health, sometimes we talk about mental health, spiritual health, and today we're talking about a subject that kind of ties them all in together in a really interesting and unexpected way. We're talking about organization and cluttering, and my guest today is Jessica Waters. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. How would you, what do you label yourself? What do you call yourself? Well, technically I'm a professional organizer, okay. but that's kind of a dry term for what I actually do, which is I work with people on all levels of decluttering. Their mind, their heart, their body, their bank accounts. Yeah. Their entire environment. Their environment. Yeah, their whole ecosystem. Their ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Their stuff, but however, as we were talking just now about the name for this show, you said it's not about your stuff. Right. So why is it not about the stuff? Well, when I first started doing this, um, the way I started doing it is that I took a, a cross-country journey in my early 20s and everywhere that I stopped to visit friends, I would open their cabinets and I'd say, oh, you know, do you want me to redo your kitchen cabinets or your closet? And they loved it. So years later, when I found out there was a profession of professional organizing, um, I started doing it. And when I first entered the world of professional organizing, I was really fortunate to read a book by Karen Kingston called Clear Your Clutter with Feng Shui. Mm. And I had heard of feng shui, but I didn't really know what it was. And the thing that I really like about that particular book is that it's not really so much about feng shui as it is about the energy of your environment. Mm -hmm. And right away I realized, as I started working with people, that it really isn't about their stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, it's about their emotions, it's about their mindset it's about their deepest fears or their deepest longings mm -hmm. and it's expressed in their environment Interesting. and when their environment is filled with clutter it's usually because there's a block in the system in fact in Karen Kingston book she talks about how the word clutter comes from the Middle English word to clot mm -hmm. and when I started to think about it that way it really is that's where it is so when you have a place in your home that's cluttered it's usually because there's something stuck there. Right. And what I help people do is to unstick, un get unstuck in that place. So can you give us an example, maybe a story? I'm sure you have tons of wonderful mm -hmm. stories. Can you give us an example of coming into a place where it was super cluttered, but it really wasn't about yes, the stuff? Yes, I have a great story about that. Years ago, one of my, one of my first clients, in fact, um, was in a beautiful home in Los Angeles. And um, her house was immaculate. I mm -hmm. mean, it was like Martha Stewart had just walked out the door. Yeah. And I couldn't understand why she had called me. And she, we were doing a tour of the house, and um, she opened the door to a guest room, and it was filled with clutter. Wow. And I, I just, it was so incongruous to the rest of the house. I just couldn't understand what, you know, what that was all about. So we closed the door, and we began working on some filing and paperwork. <clears throat> And as we started talking, um, she talked about her best friend that had passed away from breast cancer the previous year. And um, she told me that the friend had used to sleep in that room. Oh, wow. And all of a sudden it was like, I get it. Yeah. That's why. You, she put all her grief, all her stuck emotions into that room and closed the door. She mm -hmm. wasn't ready until now to right. approach those feelings. Right. So. I would say if it isn't a hundred percent of the time, it's 99.99% .99 of the time. Once we uncover the emotions that underlie the clutter, yeah. the actual decluttering process is very easy. Yeah, it's like nothing. It takes m minutes. So in that case, did you say something to her oh, absolutely. or did you bring it up and absolutely. what was her reaction to it? She, she had never put the two things together. It yeah. had never crossed her mind that that was the reason the room was like that. She couldn't understand why it was like that. Right. And then what, all of a sudden when it was pointed out to her, of course, in a very gentle way, right. she was able to go, oh, wow. And then we were able to approach the room. So clearly that room had had a before and after with this 
with her friend's passing being kind of the exactly the it wasn't like that before her friend passed away wow yeah so I kind of distilled down over the years I, I've been doing this since 1997 over the years I've distilled down pretty much um, maybe five or six emotions that mm -hmm. most people have. I was just going to ask, are yeah. there some pattern yes. emotions? Yes. So. Um, I, I, I always forget one, but I'll see if I can remember. Uh, rage, yeah. rebellion, resentment, grief, and loneliness. Rage, rebellion, resentment, grief, grief and, and loneliness. loneliness. And most of the time when I walk into someone's home that has clutter, even if it's just a little bit or a lot, it doesn't matter, I usually can read what it is. It has a different energy to it depending on which one of those and usually it's not purely one or the other it's often a mix of them yeah but for example if somebody had a very strict mother who always used to make them uh, clean up their room but not in a respectful way or a supportive way but in a right. kind of a punishing way a lot of times they'll be rebellious and when they get older and have their own place mm -hmm. even though there's nobody there to rebel against they still have that like right. I don't have to do it I, you know I'm right. I can do what I want Right. And it ends up showing in a in a in their environment. Yeah. So I just re want to repeat those for our viewers who may be watching. Hopefully, this is going to reach someone who maybe is perplexed by their clutter or mm -hmm. a room or a drawer or a garage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so the emotions that you often encounter are rage, resentment, rebellion, loneliness. grief, and loneliness. Right. Grief and loneliness. So. It would, would you say that, you know, people can sit and reflect to see which of those might, or if anything like that would be I think them? if somebody is ready to, they can. And mm -hmm. that's the really important thing about this process is a lot of times, you know, if, if somebody gets pushed into it by a family member or a spouse or their own internal guilt or shame, it's not really going to be a helpful thing. You really have to be ready to to confront what it is that underlies the mm -hmm. clutter. And clutter is not just about your stuff. It's not just about the physical things in your environment. That's what we usually think of when we think right. of clutter. But I call debt mm -hmm. money clutter. Okay. I call overweight body clutter. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of different forms of clutter. It's not just, you know, that you have a lot of stuff yeah. in your environment. And so, um, do you get into many of those areas with I people do. like debt or financial clutter? I do. I, I work with people um, to kind of realign themselves to what, what they want in their mm -hmm. life. It's not just, it's not about your stuff. It's, it's about your entire being. It's, it's about your mental, it's about your emotional, it's about your right. spiritual, it's about your physical life. Mm -hmm. And I do work with people, uh, I've often gone into with people into their bank accounts and we've taken a look and seen, like what is it, where is it, where is it the energy mm -hmm. leaking out that you might be able to, you know, right. say, oh wow, I didn't even realize that that happened. Right. I, I especially enjoy working with um, seniors in that way. Mm -hmm. So I mean I have a, a wide range of things that right. I do with people. So, and, and now I have, I have like all sorts of questions <laughs> popping up in my head and they all want to come out at the same time. But, right. um, so financial clutter, mm -hmm. what might that look like and how would you help someone? Okay, well, somebody who doesn't have any idea at all what their net worth is or their, mm -hmm. you know, how much money they have in the bank account or how much right. money they have in their purse. Right. So we have to approach those things very gently or somebody who has a lot of debt. Right. You know, that carries a lot of weight yeah. to it. And, 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 and a lot of uh, emotions, I'm sure, a like lot shame of emotions. or whatever. Right. Not deserving. Right. Shame, uh, guilt, uh, embarrassment. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that people really need to know is that when you work with somebody like who's a professional organizer who's going to come into your life, you have to really make sure that it's someone that really has no judgment at all about your situation right. that it's somebody who's there to be supportive of you not to be judgmental because a lot of times people are nervous right. and that's why when I come into their house I take my shoes off I sit on the floor we laugh we cry it's like a, it's a cathartic experience right. as much as anything else right. but yes yeah, so to go back to the financial clutter if somebody has a lot of debt that's like an accumulation of stuck energy in their right. bank account or in yeah. their financial life. Yeah. So 
sometimes they need to work that out with their financial planner or their accountant, but if it's just things like, okay, let's go into your files and let's really take a look and let's really get a clear picture of where you are, mm -hmm. and then you suddenly you have choices. Right. Rather than being at the mercy of not, yeah. you know, being, uh, having your eyes covered. Right. And not wanting to listen. Yeah, and that, uh, I, I'm, that experience of having your eyes covered so that, you know, I remember going years ago, going months without necessarily looking at my bank statements. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it's the, oh my God, you know, I don't, I don't want to look at it. Right. And, and it starts to feel enormous yes. like it's something you can't even yes comprehend. it's a it's like the uh, like this giant wall of right. terror that yeah, you, you exactly. can't even approach and time and time again when people call me the very first words out of their mouth is I don't even know where to start right and that's because they've let whatever it is that stuck energy they've let it build up so it's almost like a huge dam mm -hmm. that's threatening to break and sometimes they wait until that, you know, that threatening moment. Sometimes they wait until it, after it's broken. Right. But wherever they are in the process, to me, rather than feeling shame, to me, I encourage them to look at it like it's the hero's journey. Right. They're they're plumbing the depths of their their shame, and, and it, it it never has to do with right now it right. always is about something from the past that that is manifesting or playing right. itself out right now so all, whenever what i'm hearing you say is whenever you're working with someone whether it's their you know financial clutter or you know their spatial clutter or whatever it is you're you're helping them look at what are potentially the past stories or the emotions or the triggers that have gotten them into this kind of stuckness absolutely and a lot of times when people have um a challenging relationship with mm -hmm. their partner, um, you can see it in the bedroom. Interesting. You know, their bedroom is filled with things that have nothing to do with the bedroom. Oh, interesting. And I've even had walked into people's bedrooms who are married, and you can't even lie on the bed. Like, there's so much junk on the bed. Wow. And to me, again, that speaks volumes. I mean, I've always said, I always tell my, my clients, um, Clutter has energetic noise, mm -hmm. and so it. Imagine if you just had like this buzzing going on all the time, or voices, lots right. and lots and lots of voices. Like all the stuff around you is talking to you, and right. it's talking loud, and it's really not saying very nice things. Right. You have to shut a part of yourself down in order to live in that environment because it just would be too much. Right. So you you disconnect from yourself, yeah. and you don't get to live your full life. Yeah. And it really is like that powerful and that amazing when people are willing to, you know, to look at it and right. to go through it. And it's the most beautiful journey. And I always feel so humbled to be witness to that. Right. So I'm, I'm curious about people with extreme amounts of clutter. And if you've ever worked with anybody who maybe has some hoarding. I or, have. And, I have. I don't prefer to do that because mm -hmm. that usually has a, a like a physiological mental base to it like mm -hmm. like that there's um, you know they have m mental problems yeah it's it's probably it's a different kind of thing than well I'm imagining and just hearing you talk about this all of a sudden I'm imagining that it's like potentiated you know like multiplied ten times or whatever you know if there's any of emotional upsets or fear it's probably yeah. ten times more yeah times. and I actually think that there's something like physiologically mm -hmm. like there's a part of the brain that's not wired the, I mean I'm sorry that I don't know the terminology but right. I think it's actually like almost a different breed of clutter yeah when you have somebody who's a hoarder because that's more like a mental health issue right. rather than a, an emotional health issue right yeah gotcha yeah and I have worked with people like that and I I realized that I was out of my depth. That's not where my expertise is and it's not where my passion is either. Right, right. I yeah. like to work with just regular people who have a part of their life where they feel stuck and I, won't, and I can help them right. shine the light on there. Okay. I heard something really amazing the other day. It was like kind of one of those life-changing things. Somebody said, um, confronting trauma is not about getting over it. Mm -hmm. It's about shining the light on the places that you shut down when the trauma happened. Mm, 
It and is I, beautiful. Yeah, and it was so powerful to me because that is so often, it's a trauma that people have had in their past that the, that the clutter happens. Right. And so when we can very gently approach that, again, it's just the, the actual decluttering and cleaning up process is nothing compared right. to when you take a look at what's going on underneath it. Right. Well, and, and just to go back to the story of the woman whose friend passed and had the clutter in the guest bedroom, it's not about saying, get over your friend's right. death. It's right. like, you don't have to grieve her death by having a, right. a cluttered space. Right. You know, you right. can love your friend, grieve for her appropriately, yes. and take care of your space exactly. at the same time. And, and it's doing a disservice to the friend, to the friend's memory, right. to take the room that she lived in and right. loved in and put her presence in, to to yeah. block it off, right? Because you you're shutting that part of yourself down. So again, back to the trauma, when you shine the light into that part that you shut down, it's easy. We just right. throw away a bunch of stuff and reorganize yeah. some stuff. It took a few hours and boom, it was done. Yeah. And then she could put a picture of the woman in there. She could, you know, that could be, she could call it whatever the friend's name right. was, room. You know, there, there's a lot of ways to be, to make it a sacred thing rather than a, a blocked thing. Yeah. So I'm, I'm feeling like you have a, a window into people's worlds and people's homes and all of that. And, and I'm feeling like I'm, I'm curious about what that might be like. So um, is it closets or office space or uh, garages like what are like the classic places where we get stuck energy Every, you know any, everywhere <laughs> yeah I mean it could be anywhere for a lot of times for men it might be in the garage they might mm -hmm. feel like this is my man cave I've been pushed out here I'm mm -hmm. staking my claim you know I'm generalizing of course but a lot right. of times that does happen and each room kind of has its own like story to tell about the situation that right. is being Blocked and what's off. happened? And for what's this happened? Person. Is it a couple? Is it a single person? Do the person have kids? Yeah. Do they feel pushed out? Do they feel resentful, rebellious, right. grieving, lonely? Yeah. yeah, I was just thinking, yeah, I'm, I've been pushed out to the garage. This is the only place I right. have. Right. And I'm going to stake my claim. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, you made all the decorating decisions. You, this is your domain inside. This is the only place I have. And gosh darn it, I'm going to put my stuff out here and it's right. not moving. Yeah. 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 So a lot of, of very frequently people play out their marital discord with clutter. Yeah. It's it's a uh, it's the energetic screaming. So one of the things that's uh, as I'm thinking about that clutter garage clutter or lawn clutter. I often, you know, as you're driving in Vermont and you see all of the you know pieces of junk mm -hmm. <laughs> on lawns and garages that people can't use because they're so filled. The thing that I think of is I wonder if the people are in fear of you know maybe fear of lack that if I get rid of this I'm going to need it or like is there any of that is that is there I would imagine I mean I haven't worked so much with people who have a lot of that in mm -hmm. their life I would guess that that would could be a you know it would make sense for it to be about fear and to me, when I look at that, it seems to me almost like they're building a fortress mm. to protect. Like, yeah. you know, you can't hurt me or you can't. Yeah, some, some element of safety. There's like a little bit of rebellion going on. Like, yeah. I can do whatever I want. This is my property. Right. And there's probably some, you know. Element of safety or yeah. protection. Protection, kind of yeah. Thing. So a while ago, you mentioned working with seniors, mm -hmm. and uh, it seems to me that seniors might have some particular needs, perhaps. Yes, Can you do. tell us a little bit about what that, those are? Absolutely. Um, it's My experience working with seniors started with my own father, who mm -hmm. was, you know, in his lifetime, he was very active, he was very intelligent, he had a lot going on in his life, and then he fell very ill. Mm. And his going through, sifting through his life while he was still alive, because he really couldn't mentally take care anymore of the details of his life, I realized that this is something that happens a lot with seniors when they, you know, they start to lose their mental facilities. Even if it's slowly, mm -hmm. um, they don't have it within their capacity to, you know, make sure that every dot is, whatever it is, T is crossed <laughs> yeah. and I is dotted. Um, so. For example, in different places, I've found um, 
family members have been dipping into the bank account. Um, I have found, oh. uh, you know, maybe the senior was watching TV and ordered something and they didn't realize that it was like on auto ship and so, right. you know, hundreds of dollars later we could oh, s wow. stop it from happening but nobody was there looking to see that those things were happening. Right. I just found out the other day it's called daily money management for seniors. Oh. And that's what I do. I didn't realize it actually had a name, but yeah. Right. So, um, yeah, it's it's a way to offer seniors freedom so yeah. that they can do the things that they love to do and not worry that, you know, their money is leaking right. out the door that they're not So aware. you're offering the service of keeping their bookkeeping tidy, you know, it's yeah. like balancing their checkbook kind of a exactly. thing. Exactly. Paying their bills, making sure that there's nothing untoward happening in their bank account. Mm -hmm. I'm very protective of seniors, you know, who, yeah. you know, they deserve respect and they deserve to enjoy that last part of their life. Right. And maybe they just don't have it, the wherewithal for whatever reason, whether yeah. it's emotional or mental, maybe they don't have the experience. Sometimes, you know, in the older generation, sometimes the wife never right. knew how to never pay bills. Managed yeah, and she never managed, managed the money and all of a sudden the husband dies and the wife is left I don't know I don't what to do. I don't know right. how to make this work. Right. And, um, you know, for one one client, I retrieved almost $60,000 in um, long-term care insurance claims by filing the claims diligently. I mean, it was a lot of work, a lot of wow. faxing, a lot of phone calls. That's incredible. Yeah. 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 So, and the other, the, the other sad part of that story is hearing of many... Uh, seniors getting scammed. Absolutely. Just getting, Absolutely. Just, uh, heartbreaking stories. It really is. And it's, you know, I have a, a client in LA that um, her aunt and uncle, she was their, uh, the guard, their guardian as they got older. They were in their 90s. And some gentleman, some scammer, mm -hmm. just drove by one day, knocked on their door, and sold them this roof policy mm -hmm. that was attached to the sale of their home. So every year they had to pay a certain amount of maintenance fee or whatever it was, and when they sold their house, it went with the house, that like the next people were legally obliged to continue with this policy. Oh my God. I didn't even know that you could do that. But I'm sure that they can go to a lawyer and right, have that broken, not. but they have to go to a lawyer and have right. it broken. And this is the kind of thing, I mean, there's, you know, when seniors are living alone, a lot of people knock on their door. And right. you don't know whether or not it's know. legitimate. Right. Yeah. So I, I feel very protective of the people yeah. that are my, my seniors. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'm thinking of the person watching at home who may have a cluttered desk or a cluttered office or closet or whatever. Are there some, is there like places to start? Like what would you say people need to start thinking of if they were going to? Well, I... I really believe that you should start where you feel the least amount of anxiety. It's mm -hmm. kind of like going to the gym. You don't want to go to the gym and start lifting, you know, 400 pound right. weights. You want to start slowly, build the muscles up. So if it's something that you're not used to doing at all, mm -hmm. open a drawer. And if that, I like drawers because they're contained. They're, you know, it's just a small space. It's not very threatening. A lot right. of times there's like pencils and, you know, junk in there. The process is the same whether it's the a drawer, a closet, your garage, whatever it is, the process is exactly the same. Mm -hmm. This is what I recommend. Empty the space. Clean it out. Like literally take spray cleaner and a rag and clean it out. And then make an intention for that space. Whether, let's right. just say it was a drawer. Make an intention. Say, this is going to be the drawer that I put my miscellaneous things that don't really fit anywhere else. And then only put the things back that you love. Mm -hmm. People said, somebody asked me the other day, do you have like a, a standard or how do you decide whether you want to keep something or not? And I said, there's only one. And that is, do I love it? Right. Do I love it? And I always have clients who come up to me after, do I love it? Do I love it? And But it sticks with them. Yeah. You know? And it, it makes it so simple. Do I love it? And sometimes if you're wondering if you love something or not, hold it in your hand and ask yourself, does this give me energy or does it take energy away? Right. And then once you realize that it takes energy away, it's so easy to get rid of it. Right, right. 
So I want to be sure to show our viewers how to find you and, and hopefully if they're needing some help, getting that help from you. So your website is imperfectorder.com. Mm -hmm. So in perfect order. And that's also how to find you on Facebook or Twitter. Your Twitter handle is at imperfectorder and your Facebook name for well, the Facebook, yeah. you would just put in In Perfect Order Organizing Solutions. Okay. And actually, probably the for Vermont, the best way to, to, to get more resource information is to go to the Facebook page because, okay. unfortunately, I just moved here a few yeah. months ago and my, my website is more LA-centric, although you can yeah. find things out there. But yeah, the Facebook page, I put articles and blog posts there that I've had from the past and tips and things like that. Wonderful. Yeah. So I to wrap up, I would love to hear the story of something you told me over the phone when we were speaking the other day about the woman, your client, who had a really cluttered uh, room, dining the, room, right? I really, and uh, she was starting a, a home-based business. Remind me again. <laughs> I think you said she, uh, so a client of yours whose daughter maybe had moved out and she was thinking of selling the house or something like that and oh, she yes. needed to clear yes. this one room. Yes, yes. Well, uh, yeah, this is actually somebody that I've been working with here in Vermont. Um, and she, yes, she's uh, soon to be an empty nester and she just really wanted to put some energy back into her home in a way that she hasn't had time to do over the years. And um, we took a space in part of her home. She's just starting a new business and we have completely decluttered it and it allowed her to take all the product that she had on her dining room table so her dining room was completely unusable. Mm -hmm. And we moved it into this beautiful office and she's so excited. I mean, yeah. she's when I'm not there, she does more stuff and it's right. just, it just is, empowering her to be able yeah. to really dive into her business in yeah. a way that she hadn't before. Yeah, and so I'm sure she's feeling all this renewed energy in her business and loving being in her space. She is. And she is. I mean, it's we're, we're in the process of it, but it's very exciting yeah. for her. And as opposed to having her business be just kind of shoved in a corner and right. just kind of occupying space that wasn't really destined for it is right. now, now has a place of it. Well, that's so. the thing a lot of times when we start um, working together is she didn't expect that we were going to work that way. She thought right. we were going to start over here, but we started over here because a lot of times I like to work backwards. I like Perfect. to work from the deepest up until the, the top. Great. And it's exciting for her. Well, this has been really illuminating. I thank you so much for joining us. And with that, what I want to say to our viewers is that you never know how inviting someone like Jessica in or giving Jessica a call, finding her on Facebook and having her come and help you say, where do I start? How can I you know, find a better use for the space or how can I tackle this clutter? You never know where it's going to take you. And so I hope you'll, you'll check that out if you're needing some help. Thank you for joining me and I hope you will join us next week. Take care.